Hey, what's up, y'all? FathomRL here. Um, just a little thing before we get into the vlog. I was actually supposed to go to the truck race, so I asked my mom for tickets on, like, Thursday night or something. She was like, nah, let's just wait, and then they got full, so we couldn't really make the truck race. Um, it's just unfortunate, but my grandma came in clutch, got me tickets on Sunday for a cup, and we went there and said, even though I wasn't able to see truck, it was still an awesome experience. And I'll show you about it in this vlog. Bye. So we were already minus one on the to-do list, but that's okay because we still had three more chances to make it up. So we went from my grandma's house to the track, which was only like a 40 minute drive. It really wasn't that bad. We got Wendy's along the way because I was hungry. It was actually pretty decent, not gonna lie. Uh, but anyways, we got closer to the track and the hype was real. I was ready to get there, get some next gens, ask Prisco some questions and watch this race. For some reason, I had to put on sunscreen prior to it. I don't know why. Anyways, here's the fan zone. Uh, had a pretty cool entrance. All the entrances were pretty cool. There was Chastain's jockey car. And then here was the mashed potato stand. The best part of it all. They were giving out free mashed potatoes to literally anyone. The fan zone was pretty fun, not gonna lie. Because they had, like, slides. And right there was the four performance singers, driver, Q&As. Briscoe wasn't there. He was actually at another stage, but... It was still pretty cool, and if I would have to go again, I'd probably try to get autographs from all the drivers because they did that as well. So the fan zone was pretty cool. You got the Ally booth over there with the Alex Bowman show card. A lot of stuff there. Eating mashed potatoes from the potato booth. Really getting scanners right now. And then we had a fake pace car come in. I got some pretty cool photos of scanners. Display. Anyways, we made our way over to like awesome, the merch stands. Like uh, I got like an official Ally 400 shirt. Uh, it was pretty cool. I'll actually gen. wear it soon. Uh, and uh, the uh, thing I was really looking forward to was the next gen. And they were unfortunately head. sold out of Briscoe's next gen, but they did have a couple others. So I have the review on my channel if you want to go watch that. Anyways, we had one thing left on our to-do list, and that was ask Briscoe what he wants for lunch. Sorry if the music is loud here, but that was literally the track, not me. Anyways, here's some more views of the center. I don't even know why I put this in, but I did anyway, so here you go. Who is Riley Herbst? No just want to keep it's the pretty flow simple, moving, so no one is waiting to And in a couple of minutes, enter. I went over to the stand to ask Briscoe a question. You have somebody else? What's your name? Hey, Chase. Uh, my name's... I was at Circuit of the Americas earlier this year, and I went to your Q&A at the yeah. core performance thing, and I asked you, what do you eat for breakfast? And apparently, you don't eat anything. I don't eat anything for breakfast. So I came oh, back to ask you the most anticipated question of all time. Oh, man. What do you eat for lunch? Oh, <laughs> Yeah. Next Q&A, we'll do dinner. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, for lunch, so we have a, a like a chef that cooks for the whole team on race weekends, and I always have him make me uh, pasta every single time. So this, uh, he kind of changes it up on the noodles, so it's kind of a guessing game what kind of noodle you're going to get. But uh, just the straight marinara sauce, I can't do meat in the sauce. I, I don't know why I've always been like that. But yeah, it will be some type of pasta and then uh, marinara every, every single race day. Oh, come on, Chase. You're in Nashville, Tennessee. We have Hattie B's hot chicken over here. Walking to the and, train. Anyways, we're going to the infield. And I know I lack a lot of personality, but like, if you're still here, still watching this somehow, thanks. Anyways, here was the infield. It really was. It was just kind of mad, honestly. They had the two teams infield club, which was like nothing. It was just tents and like cornhole. Oh yeah, shout out to Julie, by the way, for giving us all this free Hunt Brothers pizza stuff. It was pretty cool. She's my grandma's neighbor, so she hooked us up. Anyways, we made our way to the stands, and it was a pretty cool side. You could have paid to be down there for like $100 a person, which is outrageously expensive, so we didn't do that. They cleared the track of all the people a couple minutes later, did the command and everything, and then we were ready to go.
And then the pace truck rolled off and all the cars along with it. Denny Hamlin started on pole and he actually did pretty decent throughout the race. Didn't win though. Anyways, there was Briscoe's car. Unfortunately, it would end up wrecked with the car right behind him right there. But that was okay because he still, I mean, he still came out of the garage a little later and he finished his run. Uh, anyways, there's all the cars going by. Okay. As they made their way to the restart zone. Oh yeah, there was this one guy that you can see right here. He was flipping off Kyle Busch every single lap. So if you continue to watch the vlog, you'll actually see him just flipping off the 18. Literally every single lap of the race. And it's really funny, honestly. So here's the start. They made their way to the restart zone. And here it is. Since there was like thunder building and like storm clouds and everything, and there were three rain delays throughout the race. This was the first one. The first and the second one were pretty minor, but then the third one was like from three or four hours. So here's the first one. They brought it down under caution. It was like a 30 minute rain delay. Rain delay.
Just turned off. It is chaos. It is chaos.
So here with Chase Elliott's burnouts, honestly, I'm just kind of mad with Chase Elliott. He won at Coda, and then he won here, so there's a 66% of him winning next time I go to a track. So next time I go to a track, I think you can kind of tell who's going to win. Anyways, he does burnouts for like 40 more seconds, so enjoy that. Shout out to my great grandma and senior living because she allowed us to stay the night. It was pretty cool. And then, as we were driving back, we stopped at a Waffle House. My first time going to Waffle House, and I was hyped. I got pan, no, waffles, whatever.